Um, hi. Um, AS Biology Revision, again, for the January exam. I know it's only four whatever days away, but it's still hard. I'm still confused. There are still things I don't understand. And one of these is the carriage of oxygen. I haven't made many notes on this yet, so I'm just going to be sort of saying what I know and notes from my book that can help me. Um, so the carriage of oxygen, hemoglobin, I still I don't understand it that much. But oxygen is transported in the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, um, and these cells contain the protein, and it's protein, the hemoglobin. Um, and when the hemoglobin takes up oxygen, it becomes oxyhemoglobin. So, red blood cells contain the protein, which is hemoglobin. When these take up, hemoglobin takes up oxygen, it becomes oxyhemoglobin. So, oxygen, hemoglobin, goes together. And a hemoglobin is a complex protein with four subunits. Um, each subunit contains polypeptide, which is like a protein chain. You probably looked a little bit like of that at GCSE. And a heme, which is a non-protein, a heme group. Um, the heme group, probably makes no sense at the moment, but the heme group um, contains a single iron atom in the form of Fe2, iron. Um, and this iron, iron, okay, this Fe, iron, strong, iron, ion, iron, ion can attract and hold an oxygen a molecule so remember there are how many um wait yeah there are four subunits so each subunit contains the protein chain and the heme group so the oxygen ion can attract and hold an oxygen molecule so the heme group is said to have an affinity like attraction for oxygen so heme groups they love oxygen so, as each heme group can hold one oxygen molecule, how many are there? Four. There are four. So, each heme group can hold one oxygen molecule. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen molecules. Because remember, what's hemoglobin? It's a complex protein with four subunits. Okay. So, how does it take up oxygen? Oxygen is absorbed into the blood from the lungs. In the lungs. Easy. So, oxygen molecules diffusing into the blood plasma enter the red blood, red blood cells, the erythrocytes. And here they're taken up by the haemoglobin. What's haemoglobin? A complex protein with four subunits. So here it's taken up by the haemoglobin. This takes the oxygen molecules like out of all the solution and it maintains a steep diffusion gradient. I think we're going to have to know about diffusion gradients quite well in the exam. So think and remember with the steep diffusion gradient because this allows more oxygen to enter the cells because it's very high. Oxygen over here, but really low over here, so they go in. Ooh, steep diffusion gradient. So um, when they release oxygen in the body tissues, cells need oxygen for aerobic respiration. So therefore, the oxyhemoglobin, what's oxyhemoglobin? Oxy well, hemoglobin is a complex protein with four subunits. So the um, so hemoglobin plus oxygen is oxyhemoglobin. So therefore, the hemoglobin must be able to release the oxygen. And this is called disassociation. So, releasing oxygen in the body tissue, cells need oxygen for aerobic respiration. So, the oxyhemoglobin must be able to release the oxygen for aerobic respiration. So, this is called disassociation. And um, this is the harder bit um, hemoglobin and oxygen transport. So, um, the ability of hemoglobin to take up and release the oxygen, so they remember they take it up and they let it go through aerobic respiration, it depends on the amount of oxygen in the surrounding tissues because they can't take up stuff that's not there. So the amount of oxygen is measured by the relative pressure that contributes to a mixture of gases. So, wait, yeah, the amount of oxygen measures the amount of pressure that's continued contributes to a mixture of gases. And this is called the partial pressure, pressure or um, in the exam it will probably be written as like a P and then a huge O and then a little 2. So like O2 with a P on the beginning. Um, so it's also called the oxygen tension and it's measured in units of pressure, KPA. You should know KPA. A uh, little K, big P, A. Um, with a normal liquid, you would probably expect the amount of oxygen absorbed into the liquid to be like directionally proportional to the oxygen tension in the surrounding air. So like the more oxygen tension in the air, um, the more oxygen absorbed into the liquid. And a graph of percentage saturation plotted against oxygen tension will be a straight line with a normal liquid, just a normal liquid. And, but unfortunately, because you think that this isn't the case, 
with blood containing hemoglobin which is you know, great thanks um hemoglobin takes up oxygen in a way that makes an s-shaped curve on the graph on the graph not on the graph I think it's with graphs. I was joking. Um, this is called the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve. I know. Um, so, at low oxygen tension, the hemoglobin doesn't take up, um, doesn't like take up readily, like blah, 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 oxygen molecules. Um, this is because the heme groups that attack, um, that attract the oxygen. Remember, they've got an affinity for oxygen. So, because the heme groups that attack the oxygen are in the center of the hemoglobin molecule, right in the middle there. So, this makes it really difficult for the oxygen molecules to like, reach the heme groups and associate um, with it, because it's right in the middle, so they've got to go all that way. So, it's really hard at first for the first oxygen molecule um, is, like, to combine. So, it's difficulty in combining the first oxygen molecule for the low saturation level of hemoglobin at low oxygen tension. So when it's low oxygen tensions, it's really difficult to combine. But um, as the oxygen tension rises, the diffusion gradient into the hemoglobin molecule increases. So more oxygen um, as it rises, the diffusion gradient also increases, um, diffusion gradient into the hemoglobin molecules. What's hemoglobin? It's a complex protein with four subunits. And eventually, one molecule finally diffuses into the hemoglobin molecule, and it finally associates with one of the heme groups. How many heme groups are there? Four. Four heme groups. Um, yeah, that is right. Yeah, because each subunit consists of a polypeptide protein chain and a heme group, which is a non-protein group. So when the first oxygen molecule finally diffuses in all the way, because remember it's right in the middle, the heme is right in the middle. So um, this choice causes a slight change in the shape of the heme um, of the sorry. This causes a slight change in the shape of the hemoglobin molecule, which is known as a conformational change. Um, you might not have to know that the name of that, but it's called a conformational change. Think of it like when they oh, when they enter and they're like, yes, I confirm you have entered. So that's like a conformational change. And this allows this is starts to allow more oxygen to diffuse into the hemoglobin molecules and associate with the other heme groups easily because there's like one's already gone in so they say, like, hey come in guys party so they just go in easily so this accounts for like the steepness of the curve and the oxygen tension rises so it goes like this so this is, imagine this is a graph with um, partial pressure of oxygen oh yeah and the percentage saturation with oxygen so it starts off little, like this, whoa, and then, oh, yes, yes, an oxygen molecule is finally associated, yes, to finally diffused into it. It goes, wee, just a little bit up, and it keeps going something really steeply, because the other two are like, oh, yeah, we're getting there too, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes, keep going up, keep going up. But then, once it contains three um, oxygen molecules, it comes really hard for the last one to diffuse in and associate with the last available heme group. It's like thinking you've got really three really really good friends, and then there's like one that's like, oh, hi. Mm. So imagine he's what the last one's like. He's like it's really hard for him to join in. He doesn't know them as well, and he wants to come in. So um, this means it's difficult to achieve 100% saturation um, saturation of all the hemoglobin molecules, even when oxygen um, tension is really high. So as the curve levels, um, as it levels off, so it's going. Remember it's going like this, and it's sort of going like that um, it never is like completely 100% because it's still really hard for it to get in despite even if it's got an increasing oxygen tension so that's okay that's not too bad so remember the graph is just like this if you need to draw one it's like a little less woo, at the top and make sure it never quite reaches 100% saturation with oxygen because it can never get to quite 100% so the poor little last one is never quite friends with them so um Mammalian hemoglobin, mammals, is really well adapted to transporting oxygen to the tissues of a mammal um, because they need obviously they need lots of oxygen because they're respiring a lot when because they're more active than other things. So the oxygen tension found in the lungs is sufficient to produce almost 100% saturation, um, almost 100%, not quite 100%. Remember, it's really hard for it to diffuse in. So, um, the oxygen tension in respiring body tissues is sufficiently low to cause oxygen to disassociate ready from the oxyhemoglobin. So, that's just normal hemoglobin oxygen transport. 
but then there's one last bit of it that they added in to make it hard and that's fetal hemoglobin little tiny fetuses little babies so in the mummy's tummy so with the hemoglobin of um, a mammalian mammal the mammalian fetus it needs to have a higher affinity for oxygen than that of an adult hemoglobin um, because the fetal hemoglobin must, has to pick up um, all the oxygen for the environment that makes adult hemoglobin reduce, release oxygen so it needs a really high affinity for oxygen because in the placenta the fetal hemoglobin must absorb oxygen from the fluid in the mother's blood because obviously it's still a baby in the mummy's tummy so this reduces the oxygen tension within the blood fluid um, which in turn makes the maternal haemoglobin release more oxygen. So the um, so the haemoglobin dissociation curve, which is the graph S graph, yeah, um, for fetal haemoglobin is to the left of the curve for adult haemoglobin. So if you've got um, curve for adult haemoglobin, this one's so it's like this. I'm doing it backwards for you. So, so remember, it's always oops, sorry, no, I did it the wrong way around. I'm I did it backwards and upside down. So adult hemoglobin, normal, hey, woo, -hoo. and then fetal hemoglobin to the left. So up. Yeah. So think of it. If you need help thinking of like if it's up or below, so I just confused you. Think of like there's an adult, the mummy. So she's the mummy, and then she's like, whose life does she put first? Her life or the baby's life? And she'd always put the baby's life first. Well, hopefully she would. So um, the baby has is higher up than her in her mind. So there's mummy's hemoglobin. Baby seal moment. Wee. So that's all about carriage of oxygen. I'm still not 100% sure on it. I'm probably going to have to watch myself on video back a lot. Sorry, this is a really long video, but um, this is a hard topic, so I went through everything. So this is carriage of oxygen, and good luck in your biology AS um, exam.